This edition of Rebels has jumped out to a hot start in the SEC, backed by one of the most dominant one-two punches in the country. Strike three, fastball, blew it right by him. A little emotion there for Doug Casey. Here we go, 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss! He went with the slider and he got him! Backed by National Hitter of the Month Tim Elko, Ole Miss has shown it has what it takes to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. Unfortunately, one misstep can change the identity of a team. As the red and blue head toward the heart of the SEC schedule, it'll be a next man up mantra. And the first to test it will be the number one team in the country, Arkansas. Point out where Oxford is. Little blue dot right there. From what I know is if it starts raining here, we're done. So I say, I say we pack it up tonight. Yeah, pack it and up I say we just play tomorrow. two tomorrow. Oh, shit. That's what he's talking Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So we're not going to the meeting right now. <coughs> sure. You can go hang out anywhere in this building. Don't leave the building. But you have to stay here for an hour and hold the pattern. We're currently in a holding pattern. Um, everybody left. Me and JB have been in here for, what, five minutes now? Yep. Uh, just trying to figure out what a holding pattern is. They had them in 19. We're in a, what are we in a? Holding pattern. We're in a holding pattern. The air at the traffic moment. control, you know, we're just holding. We're just taxiing. Hold. Right now. Hold. Yeah. Well, the game has been pushed back to eight. We are in a holding pattern, apparently. We were about to have team meeting, got told we're now we're in a holding pattern. And so we're just buying time, walking around. Um, looking at what could have been in Swayze tonight. Um, maybe still could be if this uh, game hopefully is played. All right, uh, so we're going to uh, postpone or cancel the game tonight. And so tomorrow we play two. You know, show up like a champion, like you want to be here and uh, be early. You know, be five minutes early. Don't be a couple minutes late. All right. Sucks tonight's canceled, but just going to have to go kill Tim and some Madden Rocket League and make it a good night out here. I can't. I was at a boost. You boys. No! Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm stuck in the goal. Stick to the front. No! Stick to the front. No! I botched it. I botched it. So what we meant to say was this game. This this is our this is our game. The the last couple just warm ups. Now we're playing the show. Yeah. Uh, at least one of us will win this game. Oh. Yo, yo, yo. Mm. Yeah, just break my dart. Is this malarkey? This is my dart. Oh. Uh, there's a home run off Tim, proving again that he's nope. just inferior at video games. <laughs> well, you know what? Sure, I'll give Kevin just barely beat me in a walk off two to one. <laughs> what? what? Um, no, but, four to one. No. Well,. <laughs> We're going to keep playing here, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. When Doug Nikhazy arrived in Oxford, he knew exactly who he was. I would describe my playing style as just being a competitor. I probably, I kind of keep all my energy stored up, and then when I go in between the light, white lines, I kind of let it fly. And when the Southpaw let it fly, the competition couldn't keep up. Ole Miss fans on their feet. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Strike three called. 
He paints the corner with the third strike. That was awesome. I didn't think I was going to be put in that spot, but I'm excited. That got me fired up. I'm excited. I'm happy I can finish out the weekend for us. I, that was just, that was awesome, dude. Free. Scary being a freshman, but I love it, man. It's awesome. No matter the moment in 2019, Nikhazy always answered the bell, quickly earning a spot in the weekend rotation. When he gave me that opportunity, I was really, I was genuinely really surprised. But once he gave it to me, I didn't really look back. I wasn't really nervous or anything like that. I think we all knew Doug's a big game pitcher. I mean, he wants the ball in the biggest spots and see him go out his first SEC start. And I think he had a no hitter through seven or something. A lot of credit goes to the chicken parmesan before the game that day too. Um, I think it was like 10 a.m. and Doug made us eat chicken parm and if he's going to throw seven no-hit innings, I'll eat whatever. Hey listen, I'm going to say this before I walk out, be yourself today, right? I know you're from Florida and you're pitching against Florida and all of that. How you're successful is you just Doug the Casey, right? You don't have to throw it 96 today, you just got to be yourself and make pitches. Now. Uh, everyone knows Doug Day and all of those things that, that social media has kind of blown up. That started just because of the belief in our team when he went out on the mound and probably our fans. Like you just knew, hey, we're gonna we're gonna win this game. The guys that seem to win a lot of baseball games, you know, the teams score more runs for them. They play better defense, and it's not because they do it consciously. I think they do it subconsciously because they're relaxed. They know that this guy's gonna you know, have a good outing for them. Some people will say they're like uh, Doug. Just it seems like they score a lot of runs for Doug whenever he's on the mound, and I I try and create that environment. Sometimes they'll be a little bit more happy. Sometimes they'll be a lot more serious and just trying to fit the mood of the day to give our offense the best opportunity to succeed. Strike three, there's a paint the corner. And that will end the inning. What a job by Doug Nikhazy. And a one-two pitch. Curveball, swing and a miss. He struck him out. Doug Nikhazy with number nine ends the inning unscathed. Coach B calls me up to the front of the bus and I'm like, okay, I'm dead. I'm in trouble for whatever reason. And he pulls me aside and says, um, they're thinking about selecting you for the USA team. I don't want to get your hopes up, but I think it's really you have a really good opportunity. You should start planning accordingly for that. And then once I actually made the team and got the chance to travel, because I was almost as certain that I wasn't going to even make the team. Once I made the team and I was traveling all over the place, it was experience of a lifetime. Ace Lacey, roll the video of him king our entire team. Oh gosh. <laughs> but then, wait, wait, then roll the video of Ant hitting the bomb off you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh -oh. Down the the, no, the only run he gave up in Ant's first home run of the, the season. Old, the old. <laughs> then the old. <laughs> no, I've given up my fair share. Being able to just like play my sport, like everyone else out here, like coming out to see Fourth of July fireworks and see us play, it's like it's, a, it's like an honor. It's an honor. Yeah. Awesome. And all these years, if you get an opportunity to play and then actually on Fourth of July and in a big place like this, and see all the, yeah, to see the fireworks is awesome. It's so fun. Good morning, Rebels. It is game day. Let's get after it. Right when I got on campus, I think everyone has this experience when you're so far away. You get really homesick, you don't fully enjoy this place, and you don't get to take it all in because you're so far away. Through the first half of my freshman year, uh, it became a second home to me, and now it's just like, every time I'm away, it's great to see my family, I love seeing them. Shout out to mom and dad. But now I even have my sister here, and now this place for her along with me has become home. Every time that you pitch, imagine that there's like a 10 year old kid in the, in the stands for the first time and it's like it's first time seeing an Ole Miss Rebels game and I'm the example of what an Ole Miss baseball player is. I gotta go out there and be the, the example of what an Ole Miss baseball player is for him and that's the guy that's like the, historically what, the, what Coach B has put into all of us is to be that like guy that has tons of energy plays with conviction and goes out on the mound and tries to dominate. And if you play any, if you play scared, you can't do that. We've arrived to Swayze Field. Now we got 18 innings ahead of us. So uh, let's get in there and beat some hogs. Oh, Red Bull. Tim Elko is going to try and rehab and perhaps later this season play with a brace. He will not be in the lineup this weekend. That, that's a huge blow for us, Tim going down on two levels. Statistically our most uh, impactful offensive player, um, but it, maybe even more than that, um, the leadership. Despite the loss of team captain Tim Elko on offense, the Rebel lineup stayed strong 
and struck first. 2-2 to Dunhurst, and he hits a shot. Gonzalez hits the bag at third, comes around to score. Kevin Graham trying to come to the plate. He'll score without a throw. It's a two-run single for Hayden Dunhurst. Ole Miss takes a 2-0 lead. The early Wolfpack attack gave Gunnar Hoagland just what he needed to attack the Razorback hitters. No way to replace Tim Elko, but one way that you can make up the difference was a guy like Hoagland. It's a swing and a miss with a 94 mile an hour fastball down and away for strikeout number one. Yes, sir, big, big out right here. Swing and a miss. Good start on the mound for Gunnar Hoagland. Swings and misses, that's strikeout number three. Go two, swing and a miss. That's the fifth strikeout for Gunnar Hoagland through three innings. Swing and a miss. Moore goes down swinging for the third time in the game. That's the eighth strikeout for Gunnar Hoagland. Even with the right-hander's dominance, it was only a matter of time before the visitors struck, and struck big. The 1-0. This one's lined, back up the middle, a base hit. McCants will field it in center field. Goodhart comes around and will score, and Arkansas is on the board. Wallace lifts this to right field, that ball carrying, and it's going to one-hop the wall. One run scores. Here comes another run as Goodhart going to try to come all the way around from first. It's a two-run double, and Arkansas gets the win to improve to 8-2 and two in the SEC. Ole Miss falls to 7-3, and three. an impressive come-from-behind win for the Razorbacks. All right, um, so here's the story of the game, and it's, it's not a secret, and you know, we've played enough games to, 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 to figure this out. They were able, when they got people on, you know, to get the big hits, to get the big at-bats, and we weren't able to do that. They made some better pitches, right, when the, the game was on the line. But here, here's the thing that I want you to think about for a second. This league will eat your ass up if you let it. It's the number one baseball conference in the country, and the reason for it is, man, it, you know, I don't like using the word grind, but it's a grind, right? It is like you have to come to war every single day. Man, you got to want to fight in this league, all right? Because you are going to get smoked in the mouth. You're going to be up, and then all of a sudden they're going to hit a homer or something happens, and now you're down. And when it doesn't go your way, get your ass up and throw another punch. Grind another pitch, foul another ball off. Right? Make a play and help us win. That's how you win in this league. You just can't hope that they play bad. They're going to play good. But I want to play better than them. I want to be tougher than them. That's who we're supposed to be. So over the next hour, figure that out. Put the red jersey on, all right? And let's go compete. Let's go. Fresh off a of five for five day in game one, Hayden Dunhurst threw the first punch. Get out of here. Get out. Get out. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. TJ McCants batting in the six hole, looking for a two out base hit to add to the lead. One, two, three, good job. Let's go. Hits it on the ground past the first baseman, Opitz. Chatnier comes home to score, and Ole Miss leads two to nothing. Let's go! Let's go! Come on! That's a long run. A fight is exactly what Junior Doug Nikhazy looks for when he takes the hill. struck him out. Doug Casey would rather have a strikeout on Doug Day. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Casey yells out. Casey delivers. Little number in front of the plate. Casey charges, gloves, turns, throws the first, and he's out of the inning. And Casey jumping and celebrating as he runs to the bench. End of the inning. In the SEC, it seems every fight goes 12 rounds, and Mike Bianco called on the aggression of the pack to ensure a game two TKO. From the stretch, doesn't even check the runners and delivers a fastball, swung on, lifted to right field, pretty well stroke. Wallace going back to the wall, kiss it goodbye! And there's a ranked 
storm in right. Man, that was one of the coolest moments I've ever seen in Swayze. That was awesome to see Hayden hit that ball out of here in a great shower in right. This is my seventh year here, and I still pinch myself when I see what happens in right field when we hit a home run. Man, it's really cool, and what a home field advantage it is. Ground ball right side. That's through for a base hit. Graham has got the single, and a run will score, and it's 9-6 to six Ole Miss. Aiden Dunhurst bats with Chatagnier at second and Graham at first. Hits it on the ground. Moore off of his leg out into right field. Chatagnier comes around to score. Kevin Graham being waved around. Dunhurst trying to get to third. He'll do so without a throw. A big play in this game. That's who we are. We're, we're a fastball hitting team. And if they, if they throw the fastball to us, we're going we're gonna to punish it. Uh, being able to get a fastball early, get on base, um, just create havoc on the base pass. And we have an, we have an unbelievable offense. And uh, we get a couple runners on. We're going we're gonna to hit a ball in the gap or a home run, and we're going to score the runs. And the Rebels win game two, 13-6. Swayze showed out tonight. That was awesome. That was the biggest student section I have ever seen. I did, I did predict six home runs didn't happen. We did, get, we did get a dub, so I'll take it. And, uh, and uh, coming back tomorrow, we're going to win the series. And I just thought it running. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So we can hit. We rake. We're really good. Baseball is a funny game, and some days is just not your day. There's a fly ball to center field. Pretty well stroke. Going back, the cans at the wall. Can't get it. It's over and gone. Three-run home run hit the very top of the wall and kicked out of here. This ball pretty well hit to left field. Kevin Graham to the track. He'll watch it leave the yard. Second home run of the inning for Arkansas. And a pitch. Swung on. High fly ball left field. That one's drifting back at the wall is Graham. He can't get it. It's a three-run home run. And the Razorbacks have three homers and now lead 11 to nothing. Facing a daunting deficit and needing a spark, there was only one man for the job. So Baker at third and Gonzalez at second. Chatagne off the end of the bat, shallow center field, dumps it in for a base hit. Kale Baker comes on to score. Ole Miss knocks the zero off the board. Peyton may be our most valuable guy because of the energy that he brings. You know, I think it just kind of goes back to that momentum thing. If we can get the momentum just back on our side. One base runner at a time and uh, being able to get a base runner and, and just score one run at a time. Chopper, that's past the first baseman. Slade wins into right field. RBI single for Dunhurst. Two across so far here in the third. Boy, you'd love to get maybe four or five this inning and really feel like you've cut into that lead. Three balls, one strike to Justin Bench, the pitch. Swung on, fly ball, left field, doesn't have enough. It's at the wall and it is gone. Homer, Justin Minch. I got a pitch middle in, hit the ball into the bullpen, and uh, I look up uh, around at first base, and the showers are going off, and it just gives you like a tingly feeling in your body, and it's, it's awesome. The Razorbacks continue to deliver blows to the hosts pitching. Line drive, center field base hit. Three runs in the inning. This has just been a gift inning, the last thing you needed while you're trying to get back into this game. But the Rebels refuse to stay on the mat. So Van Cleve gets the walk with one out here in the sixth. And Leatherwood reaches on a walk. You see Dan Van Hoort come out and bring Wiggins into this ball game after Monk. Jackson Wiggins is a right-handed freshman from Roland, Oklahoma, who can really fling it. I've never seen, you know, 99 miles an hour, but luckily we knew he was going to throw a lot of fastballs, so we just had to sit fastballs. And Wiggins is a guy that's been up to 100 miles an hour, I guess, um, but it's fastball changeup. And I told our guys, I'm fine with us swinging and missing at the changeup, but don't miss the fastball. So bases loaded, two outs for Peyton Chatney. He's two for three. Fastball lined right center field. It's a base hit. One run will score. Here comes another. They're going to round the third man as Harris is going to try to score. He'll score as Shotye goes into second for the base clearing double. To see Payton get that two strike uh, double on ball, I think it was 100 miles an hour. You know, made me feel really good. Swayze was already rocking. You know, maybe Wiggins was a little more weary of just throwing fastballs in there. Now Kevin Graham coming to the plate now, only down five.
was one of the longest home runs I think I've ever hit. Helps when the guy's throwing really hard. All you have to do is get in the air. It's gonna go a long way. I don't, has it landed yet? Or <laughs> for the Swayze faithful that stuck around, you look around and they're just like they're going crazy. They're going nuts. You look at the student section. That's why you came here. This is to make the fans go crazy like that, and it was awesome. Well, what did you expect on a Sunday? Would you have thought down 11 to nothing? I would say tying run on deck for <laughs> Ole Miss. Swung on, base hit to right. He hung a breaking ball, dumps it into right field, and the Rebels have runners in first and second. And the tying run is coming up. Wow. Here's Ben Van Cleve, over two of the walk. Swung on, line drive, left center gap. Rounding third is Bench. He'll score. McCants goes to third. The ball skips away from battles a few feet. It's 14 to 12. Let's go. Swung on, line drive, right center. Plumley hits second. He's going to third. They're going to stop him right there. And it is a one-run game. Are you kidding me? Go, go, go. Right side, fielded by the second baseman. It's dropped on the run scores. And boys and girls and ladies and gentlemen, this game is tied at 14-14. Good heart at first, Webb at second. Rebel fans getting behind Taylor Broadway. Swung on, lines it deep right field, and that's going to be in a gap, and that's going to be trouble. It'll bounce off the wall. Two runs will score, and Arkansas goes back on top, 16-14. In the end, the Hogs were able to hold off the furious red and blue comeback, but not before the Rebs proved they're a national contender. We weren't good. We were great offensively, don't get me wrong, but collectively as a team, we weren't good, right? And we still played them to the wire. But here's the thing, gentlemen, there's no trophy for second place. There's no trophy for, you know, putting a good effort. You're supposed to put in a good effort every day. All we have to do is play good baseball. We can be really, really good but know that we got to play better.